It couldn't have gone any worse. With the Rocky theme as its soundtrack, Russia's first humanoid robot was unveiled with much fanfare in Moscow. And then unceremoniously dragged off stage. Meanwhile, in the US... It's Rosie to the rescue! Hanna-Barbera's Rosie the Robot has been brought to life. Neo lives with you in your physical space and has the ability to see, hear and remember things about your surrounding environment to provide you with uniquely helpful assistance. For a cool $30,000, you can have a robotic maid help out around the house. Load three items in the dishwasher. That took five minutes. <laughs> or maybe not. Everywhere, robots are the butt of the joke. I need you to count to one million right now. That would take quite a while, and it's definitely not the most Yeah, it would, take, it would take a while, but thank goodness I have time. Count to one million right now. I appreciate the playful spirit. But while we giggle at their ineptitude, the race to develop a humanoid is attracting billions in investment, which begs the question, who will have the last laugh? Well, joining us now is Adam Dore, futurist and director of research at think tank Rethink X. Adam, great to have you along. Now, there are a lot of people laughing at the robots at the moment and their capabilities as they stand today. Should we be laughing? <laughs> Well, you know, people laughed at automobiles when they were first introduced. In living memory, we can remember when digital cameras were not terribly impressive in their early days. Even the early internet was clunky and slow and frustrating. The first iPhone had as many foibles and problems as it had marvels to, to enjoy. So we're at that stage that all new technologies go through, but it won't last long. There, the amount of resources, the amount of investment, the amount of talent that is being poured into developing robots is astronomical and they will improve extremely quickly. Mm. Yes, when you're talking about cars and the early internet and digital cameras, when we look at these big disruptions throughout history, can you give us a sense of the time frame we're looking at here in terms of the development of robots? Well, what my team's research has shown is that again and again, for technologies of all different kinds, the, the trajectory from introduction into the marketplace to maturity in the marketplace only takes about 15 years, give or take, plus or minus. But this is remarkably consistent. Typically within a generation, a technology will go from, from immature to mature. And we don't see any reason, we don't see any sign that this time will be any different for robots. And you have said that the rise of AI and robots could bring either mass inequality or superabundance, depending on our response. So what does good preparation for this disruption look like? Well, the most important thing is to recognize that this is a genuinely new challenge that humanity faces. We've mechanized work in the past with machines, but we've never introduced technologies like artificial intelligence and robots that have been able to do everything that a human being can do. This is a new challenge. The fantastic upside here is that all of the goods and services that comprise prosperity for human civilization could get produced in enormous quantities, enormous abundance everywhere for everybody to enjoy. That's the possible upside, but we are going to have to completely rethink how civilization allocates resources among different people if we aren't deciding that based on which jobs individuals are doing. This is an enormous challenge. Frankly, we've never faced anything quite like it before, and that means we need to begin experimenting and learning as quickly as possible now so that we find out what are the right choices to make and what are the wrong choices, the, the pitfalls that we must avoid in order to keep society on a stable course towards what could be an incredibly bright future. When you talk about a robot that can do everything that a human can do, what about work that is uniquely human? Do you believe that there is such a thing? Well, there certainly will be, there will be demand for human-made goods and services. Just like today, there is demand for handmade products. That is not going to change. There are certain things that 
only a human can do by definition if part of the definition of that production is that a human being is doing it and not something else. Uh, we can imagine things like human sports leagues. That's a great example. Human um, uh, companionship, human performance. Those are sorts of things that are not going to be by definition replaceable by machines, but an enormous variety, an enormous range of uh, useful tasks that human beings perform today in the global economy will be able to be performed by machines for a tiny fraction of the cost. And that means we are going to be outcompeted in those areas. So while there are some, some domains that will remain human, there, that won't provide enough opportunity for all people everywhere around the world to remain employed in the system of working for a job that, uh, that provides our income that we know today. We are going to have to change how we arrange society's distribution of prosperity in order to onboard this remarkable new technology.